Hi everyone, my name is Michael Jin, and today I'm sharing my work with automated gloss generation under realistic conditions. With over 50% of the world's languages now considered endangered, language preservation is a vital task, and language documentation is a really important part of that. The most common format for documentation is known as interlinear gloss text, or IGT. Let's take a look at what IGT looks like. Here's an example in Korean. The first line of IGT consists of a transcription of the words in the original language. These may be segmented into morphemes, where morphemes are the smallest meaning-bearing unit in the language. Morphemes include both stems, which provide meaning for a word, and functional morphemes, which modify the word's grammatical properties. The second line of IGT provides a gloss for each morpheme in the original sentence. For stems, the gloss is just the translation of the stem into English. For functional morphemes, the gloss indicates what the function of the morpheme is. For instance, in the first word, the morpheme GA indicates that the word is nominative case. The third line of IGT provides a translation of the sentence into English. One problem is that language documentation is time-consuming and monotonous, and for endangered languages, the number of native speakers who are available to do documentation is probably very low. A solution is to create a system that automates IGT generation to aid in the documentation process. Specifically, our goal is to build a model that learns to generate the gloss line of IGT given the transcription and translation line. There's some existing work on this task. One model, in a paper by Macmillan Major, uses a conditional random field to predict a sequence of glosses. However, their model uses some information that is not always present in a documentation scenario. Additionally, a CRF model is limited by its ability to only look at a fixed number of items in the sequence when predicting the next item. Another model, in a paper by Zhao et al., uses a multi-source transformer architecture. Again, some information is assumed that is not guaranteed. Our model will be subject to a number of restrictions that match the challenges of real-world documentation. First, the transcription will not have morphological segmentation provided, which the Macmillan Major and some of the Zhao models use, but will have to learn to create glosses from raw text. Next, the existing work relies on alignments between morphemes and glosses, and between words and translations, but these are not always provided, so we will omit them. And finally, the majority of IGT corpora do not have perfectly consistent glossing, but may omit glosses, use different glossing systems, or gloss words incorrectly. Our model will need to adapt to this noisy data and still produce the best possible output. And with these constraints, our model should be more practical for a real-world documentation setting, as the vast majority of existing IGT has one or more of these issues. The Zhao model uses a multi-source transformer model, where the transcription and translation sequences are considered separately until the last step. We use a single-source encoder-decoder transformer model, with the transcription and translations concatenated into a single sequence. Because the transformer uses self-attention, where each token in the input can consider all other tokens, we don't lose any information, and our model can learn the relationships between the transcription and translation with greater complexity. Our models use the BART architecture, which excels at text summarization and generation, using the following parameters. We trained it on 3,000 lines of Korean IGT data from the ODIN corpus. We conducted several experiments. First, we trained three models at different tokenization levels for the inputs. One model divided the sentences into individual words, another model divided them into individual characters, and a third model divided sentences using byte pair encoding to create subword tokens. Additionally, we trained each model for both 20 epochs and 200 epochs. Our experiments produced the following results. The word level models perform best, followed by the byte pair model, with the character level model being unable to learn to generate any meaningful results, which was likely a result of insufficient training data. Each model performed better with increased training time, as expected. Now let's see the model in action. Here, I've created a script that will evaluate our model using a provided transcription and translation. As you can see, I've selected one sentence from our Korean dataset. Here, the sentence means, I ate an apple, 
and you can see these are the correct morphological glosses. We're using the word level model that performed the best. As you can see, the model has output the correct glosses decoded into text. With results comparable to the previous work, we have shown that it is possible to generate IGT glosses even with noisy training data and no extra information. We have also seen that the single source transformer is just as effective as the multi-source one. Our experiments revealed that the word level model is the most effective, contrary to the results found in the Zhao et al. paper. The character level model, however, did not have enough data to generalize. Byte pair encoding achieved relatively high performance while having by far the most efficient training. These experiments are very promising for the future of automated language documentation. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for listening.